I am Master Saturn. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast in the Kink Ethics 101 series. Ideas about the nature of the universe logically lead us to the idea that all people are connected. We all occupy the same planet, and within it, individual societies and countries, different kink communities have their own sets of standards of behavior. Why are those standards in place? Well, the answer is kind of straightforward, mostly to maintain peace and to keep things humming along that so, so that some, many, or all may live lives of worth and fulfillment. This is where the phil philosophical branch of moral philosophy comes into play. Moral philosophy is a term that is used interchangeably with ethics, and it's its own realm of study. It sits apart from the broad ideas of general philosophy, as well as some other branches of philosophy. Uh, in fact, there are many different branches of philosophy, such as metaphysics. Uh, this is the study of all existence. This uh, asks the really big questions like, why is there life? What else is out there? Why are we all here? We all tend to ask ourselves these metaphysical questions and philosophy tries to answer them. Uh, epistemology. This concerns the intricacies of acquiring knowledge and perception. Epistemology isn't so much about the truth so much as it is about determining how we know what we know. One question in this field might be, how do we know that what we think is the truth, uh, or what we think is the truth, really is the truth? <laughs> That's a really big question. We can rack our brains. Of course, there's ethics, and we'll talk more about that in this series. There's political philosophy. The ancient Greeks developed political philosophy in tandem with individual philosophy because as they were laying the groundwork for democracy, it was crucial for them to determine the best way to govern so that they achieve what they were after, the greater good. Political philosophy is about the underpinnings of government and rule uh, so as to maintain peace, prosperity, happiness, liberty for some, for many, or for all, depending on what the political philosophy is. Uh, and uh, aesthetics. This is about defining beauty, art, and other kinds of expression and appreciation thereof. The things that make be a, a human, uh, sorry, being a human worthwhile. And we have certain aesthetics in uh, in BDSM. We express ourselves in tattooing, branding, cutting uh, needles. We express ourselves in, in rope and rope suspensions and, uh, all different kinds of things. When someone leaves marks on a person, what kind of marks and how, and those marks can be, um, you know, something beautiful or on artwork or an aesthetic. Um, you know, starting from metaphysics, the individual areas move from the biggest and broadest of questions about the biggest and broadest of things and progress down through finer and finer parts of existence. Metaphysics six sits often on, on top of a list, somewhat like a hierarchy, because it's all about the study of all existence and why it is, and aesthetics kind of sits down at the bottom because it's how to improve and appreciate life itself. The philosophical branch that we'll be studying in kink ethics is, of course, ethics. Ethics is about the application of philosophy. What good are answers or at or at least very informed or deeply held opinions about the nature of the universe and the meaning of life 
if you don't know how to apply those truths to how you live your day-to-day -day life and how you interact with the world and interact with people around you. Ethics seeks to determine how and why one should behave in a way that is most virtuous. Uh, at its most elemental, ethics is about doing the right thing. The philosophy behind it is about determining what those right things are in a way that benefits the individual and the kink community, the BDSM community at large, in a fair, just, and kind manner. In other words, ethics is about, the, is about right versus wrong, both in terms of defining those extremes and how to act on the side of what is right. Ethics are obviously important uh, constructs of civilization, and they're born out of a primal human need to understand the world, uh, to understand how to act in the world. But why exactly are ethics important? Well, because humanity needs structure to make sense out of the world. And because, you know, we have things like structure and definitions and meanings and identities and roles and and uh and we have sets of kinks and limits and boundaries these aren't just words with no with that these aren't just words that are floating out there they all have meanings and they are there are concepts and their structures and uh we have to know how to navigate all of those different things as we collect information, we order and we categorize it. This helps us decide the vast and seemingly impossible to understand universe. Uh, this, you know, we are taking, uh, we're taking our sexuality and our sexual behavior, uh, our erotic behavior. We're taking uh, how we do relationships both with, um, you know, all the different relationships, both casual, formal, uh, both uh, sexual, uh, both uh, marital, um, who we date. We're taking all of our relationships and how we do sex and how we do sexual contact with one another, how we do erotic and intimate contact with one another, and we're categorizing it and we're putting it all together to make kink and BDSM and... Uh, Ethics is a part of this on ongoing decoding of, of our world. If, not, if knowledge defines the what of the universe, then philosophy is an attempt to unlock why, and ethics is then how that why is carried out, giving us standards, giving us virtues, giving us rules by which we use to direct how we behave, both on a daily basis and in the grand scheme of things. So as you can see, ethics is really important. And, uh, you know, it's definitely something that we need to consider uh, within our kink and BDSM communities. Now, why should we even act ethically? We know that ethics is important, but why should we act ethically? Like, why should we even care? Well, philosophers have pinpointed several different reasons why humans can and why sh they should act in a virtuous manner. Let's look at just a few. It's a requirement for life. It's our biological imperative as humans to survive and to thrive and ethics are part of that complicated structure of humanity that helps us determine the best ways to act so that each of us may live a long and productive life acting virtuously helps ensure that our actions are not aimless pointless or random and by narrowing down the vastness of the universe to a lived experience with purpose and meaning especially uh, if it's one shared by a society or cultural group, group goals 
and happiness are more within reach. Also, it's a requirement for society. To be a member of society in good standing, to be a member of a BDSM community, a local community in good standing, to not be seen as a predator, for instance, one must follow the codes and laws that govern that culture. you got to follow the rules that, that govern our culture. Everything, or sorry, everybody has a role to play. And if the society, if the social fabric breaks down, the happiness of others is threatened, and it 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 affects your reputation within our culture. Ethics builds relationships both individually and on a grander scale. Kindness matters, and it helps forge the underlying bonds that unite a society. Uh, ethics is important for religious purposes. Some people try to act in a way that they have decided is the most morally upstanding, and they get their cues from their religion. This plays into a type of ethics called divine command theory. People who subscribe to this type of ethics act in accordance with the rules set forth by an organized religion or a spirituality. Uh, often derived from a holy text or the direction of divine entity or entities. While some religions say it's important to act appropriately just because it's the right thing to do, they also provide the crucial incentive of consequences uh, to be good enough. And, and a person, uh, sorry, if you're good enough, a person will reach paradise when they die, for instance. If you're bad enough, you may have an eternity of torment awaiting for you. In other words, uh, uh, sometimes we need incentives to act morally. Uh, ethics is important for our own self-interest. Uh, some uh, ethical philosophers believe that humans ulti uh, ultimately act out of only self-service that they do things with their own interests in mind. This viewpoint uh, even informs their moral behavior, as hinted in the so-called golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto you, and the similar Eastern idea of karma. Being good can be a self-serving pursuit. Hence, if a person behaves morally, respectfully, and kindly to others for whatever reason, and even if those reasons are motivated by self-interest, good things will generally happen to that person in kind. Ethics is important because humans are good. This is a major theme of moral philosophy. The essential question is this. Are humans ethical because they have to be, or do they pursue a moral life because certain acts are just naturally good for them or naturally bad for them? As an action, this plays out in the idea that humans, by and large, are themselves naturally good and try to act accordingly. Uh, there's a whole groups of religions and, and philosophies that say otherwise, that humans are naturally bad, <laughs> and it leads to an ethical conundrum. Central to this discussion of ethics is the notion of virtues. Moral philosophy is very much invested in determining not only the way humans ought to act but also the way, uh, the way that they act. Ethics leads to quantifiable values, and those values are the handful of quantities, uh, sorry, of qualities that direct good behavior. Most every different viewpoint on ethics is concerned with virtues because virtues have no uh, ties to a specific religion or ethical ideology. And many are universal. Some aren't, but uh, that's a question for ethicists to debate. And so we have a certain set of virtues within our BDSM community. We, one of those virtues is consent. 
One of those virtues is safety or risk mitigation. Uh, you know, there are different things that we see as virtuous. Uh, we don't, uh, there are things that we see as bad, things like abuse, predators, gaslighting, um, uh, discrimination, bigotry, uh, prejudice. We, we see all, we, you know, we th see things as ethically good and as ethically bad, even within our own BDSM communities. I'm Master Saturn. We'll look more at Kink Ethics 101 in another podcast as we continue in this series. Uh, for now, you can find all of our resources at BDSMUnited.com, all of our archives of past shows, over 260 by now, and growing every day. Uh, you can find our uh, Not Safe for Work uncensored social network that we created for ourselves, our own little place on the internet at mastersaturn.com. And it was a joy speaking with you today, and we'll talk again soon.